glad you saved me. Say amen. Amen. What a blessing be in God's house. Take a be here. Uh, we right on the edge of about 150 folks tonight. <laughs> Praise God for it. Scott, Scott, flesh air, amped up, ready to go. <laughs> as soon as I did that, he gave me a ticket to the gun show. <laughs> and I will not pass that up. Praise God. Uh, it's good to be here tonight. Thank God for it. Good to see everybody out. I thank God for this morning's meeting. Heaven helped us. I appreciate Him giving us strength. Miss uh, Jessica, I want to need you to do me a favor. You ready? Come say. Amen. I've been thinking a lot as Miss Jessica's coming. I've been thinking a lot about time. Praying a lot about it, and uh, truthfully, we only get long hand. Uh, we're here at ten on Sunday morning, leave around twelve thirty to two and a half hours. Usually, I'll pull out of the parking lot here on Sunday night about ten after seven. Um, so that's you know a little over four hours. Um, you know, the truth of it is, if you're going to be here four hours, and that's all you're going to get for a week. I believe I'd make the most of it. Uh, truth of it is, if he's worth the praise, you don't need the crowd to praise him. You just need the word to say. So I encourage him now, with all my heart. If he's been good to you, uh, I wouldn't look at pews. I'd just look at God. And I thank you for his goodness. I mean that.
Say this, we'll get to work tonight. Go ahead, let's stand together. Stand with us. We've got quite a few places to read tonight. We won't stand in for all of it. I remember Easter was here and uh, had a full house basically that day. And uh, one of my football boys and his grandparents were here that day. And uh, I made a comment, you've heard this story before. I made a comment uh, that compared to where we were last year with Easter. Gained about 95 people. And, uh, of course, sometimes my jokes don't go over the best. And, uh, sometimes, usually they do. Usually they're pretty good. And uh, Papa walked up to me at the church and he said, That's what I like most about this church. A church that's growing. You all have gained 95 people in a year. And I just told him, I said, We've not gained 95 in a year. Last year, we were we were in COVID. There was only 10 people here. And I would say, Brother Rob and our musicians and singers, uh, we can amen this. We've seen this place empty and had to enjoy it. <laughs> so it wouldn't matter if we only had 13, 14 here. This is still a good crowd. I appreciate you being here tonight. Looking forward to getting in God's Word together. Would you bow your heads and would you pray with us? Our Father in heaven, we look to you, Lord. We thank you for tonight. Thank you for gathering us together. Thank you for the stillness of your spirit. Father, I thank you, Lord. What, what, what if your blessings, what if your greatest blessings, what if they come from trials? What if, God, you could bring something awesome from our fears? What if, Father, we're happy to trust you with that? God, we are. Father, I thank you for this church. God, I thank you for what they mean to me. God, we could sit here the rest of the night, and Faith and I could tell this church what they mean to us. But God, it, it still wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't be accurate. Jesus, I, I pray during the times, and I pray this for our church, I pray for our preachers, our deacons, our families. God, in, in, in time of discouragement, time of low, help our church remind them, God, of the blessings that they are. Lord, help us tonight as we look into your word. We need your blessing. Lord, there's so many people we're praying for, and we believe you for that time of healing, that time of help. We've got folks struggling. We've got folks stressed. We've got folks, Lord, that are hurting. I just ask you to help our church. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. I'm trusting you with tonight's help, with tonight's meeting and message. I love you, Lord. I need you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you will. Take your Bibles tonight and look with us in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 18. We'll turn the pages together. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, if you have your Bible. I uh, went and preached Sunday night in Ohio. Uh, and I skimmed this just a little bit. And ever since then, I've had a burden for this. And uh, I'd love to share some things with you tonight. Matthew chapter number 18, if you have your Bible. Uh, I'd love to read. Uh, verses 7 through 9. Matthew 18, verses 7 through 9. Woe unto the world because of offenses, 
For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life all or maim, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. I'd love just to reread just a touch of that. It's better for you to enter into life all or maim than having two hands and two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes be cast into hell fire. Look with us in Matthew chapter number 2. Matthew chapter number 2. I apologize, Mark chapter number 2. I apologize, Mark chapter number 2. You forgive me, I don't use Bible markers. Mark chapter number 2, you have your Bible. This is the story of the man sick of the bed of palsy, and I want to, I want to catch uh, right at verse number 10. We'll start at verse 9. Whether is it, is it easier to save the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, Arise, take up thy bed, go thy way into the house. Look with us tonight, Acts chapter number 9. Acts chapter number 9. You still with us? Can you say amen? Acts chapter number 9, if you have your Bible. This is the conversion. This is the born again experience of a man who once was Saul and now he's Paul. Acts chapter number 9. Verse 1 And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus. To the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto, unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told to thee what thou must do. Look with this last place we'll read tonight, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, if you have your Bible. Second Timothy chapter number four. Look at Second Timothy chapter number four. Second Timothy chapter number four. This is the last writing, the last letter that Apostle Paul is going to write to the young preacher Timothy. Second Timothy chapter number four. We'll start reading at verse number ten. For Demas hath forsaken me. This is Apostle Paul writing to Timothy. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and he has departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. You don't care. I'd love for you to highlight, take a marker, underline, um, take mark. Just go ahead and underline that, highlight it, take mark, and bring him with thee, for he is profitable for me. He's profitable to me for the ministry. That's the reading of God's Word. I appreciate you and your patience. i uh, got a lot of ground to cover tonight, uh, so I just pray that the Lord uh, give us His Spirit uh, to be able to stay the course. Uh, and I, I pray that the message tonight helps you. Um, if I could give you a title tonight by the help of the Lord, I'd love to give you this title. Uh, what I have, I give to you. What I have, I give to you. Um, I appreciate the good reading that we got. Um, and I, I, I'll say this first, um, and you pray that, that we'll just 
preach and get out of the way that the Lord would help his people tonight. Um, there's times in preaching that uh, some things are said just to be said and have it or in, in, in uh, nervousness. Uh, wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome if every word that came out of this pulpit was life changing? Yeah. Amen. Um, well, Chase, there's no case that uh, every word can be life changing. You, you, you need to get into the message and you need folks to feel comfortable and you need folks to feel laughable. Uh, Jonah walks up on the shores of Nineveh, delivers a very short message, 16 words, 36 words, somewhere in that area. Very short message and turns and walks away and thousands repent that day. I do believe the gospel can be powerful if we allow it to be. I do believe that. Um, but what I have, I give to you. Uh, I want to say this. The Bible, even though it, it's a wonderful book and it holds the promises of God in it, it's a book full of humans. Amen. It's a book Amen. full of humans. Uh, well, what do you mean by that? This is what I mean. You, from Genesis 1 to Revelation through Revelation 22, you have a book full of humans, a book full of people with problems, a book full of people with situations, a book full of people with tragedies, a book full of people with persecutions, a book full of people with situations, and yet God loved those folks, and He used those folks. And you look at the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, and you'll find the hall of faith where so many people are listed in that precious hall of faith. And they're not Jesus, and they're not perfect, and they're not Emmanuel, and they're not the Almighty. They're regular people that they gave of themselves to God. I, I want to say this to you today. Uh, there's times that you and I feel like because of what we have going on, or because of who we're not, or because of what we're not, we're not of much use to God, and we're not of much use to people. Or because of maybe the past that we have, we're not of much use because we're, we are imperfect people. I almost wanted to title tonight's message, A Perfect God Uses Imperfect People. But I, I want to say this to you tonight. You look at every story, every situation of Scripture, there are people that are damaged. But God still used them in an awesome way. Right. You look, and, and, and I want you just to pay attention to a few things with me tonight. Uh, we read out of Matthew chapter number 18, uh, where it's, it's a brutal scripture. If your hand offend you, cut it off. And if your right foot offend you, cut it off. And if your eye offend you, pluck it out. And it's almost a situation of uh, that looks a lot like sin, and I know that it is. If you've got things that are getting in between you and God, and if you can't prioritize those things, and if you can't quiet those things down without them continuing to get between you and God, the best thing you can do is instead of trying to cool the sin down or cool the temptation down or cool the hobby down that's getting between you and God, that's getting in your study time, that's getting in your prayer time, if there's things that are consistently getting between you and God, my friend, it would be better if you just went ahead and cut it out. It would. Uh, I promise you that's the truth. Uh, but can I say this? After this, this chopping off of the limbs, if you'll have it, after that, you'll find that it was better for them to enter into life, halt, and maim than it would be to be cast into hell hole. Uh, can I say this to you? Every one of us in this room have made mistakes. Every one of us in this room have sinned. Every one of us in this room have had our problems. We've said things that we shouldn't have. Uh, we've done things that we shouldn't have. We've hurt people's feelings. We've done things in church that we shouldn't have. We've handled the Word of God wrong. Every one of us in here have been offended at some point or another. Every one of us in here, we have our problems. But here's the truth, though. If we will turn those problems over to God, God can still use us. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I want to say this to you. Uh, you look, and we'll just take some scriptures and go line by line tonight. You look at Apostle Paul and who he was. There's times that we feel like that we give God so much to work with that he can't work through our baggage I want to say this to you tonight. You look at Apostle Paul and you look at his life, how he started off an absolutely a powerful man, but by, the, by what he thought his God told him to do, he's having Christians killed left and right, and he is a fully grown adult male before he ever gets born again. 
and God is going to come to him on the road to Damascus and is going to strike him blind. And Apostle Paul is going to look at God and he's going to say this from his soul after God would strike him dead. All that I have, I give it to you. I've got, a year, I've got years of a checkered past. I've got years of mistakes. I've got years of regret. And here I am now, God, you struck me blind. And the scripture teaches us that as soon as he opened his eyes, he saw no man. And then meaning that he had eyesight problems. And there's some that would believe that he continued to have eyesight problems. But after that day in Acts chapter number 9, he is going to become one of the greatest preachers of the Grace Age Church. How can he do that with such a checkered past? How can he do that? And even though he's got great knowledge, he's living for a God a life that he doesn't deserve to live. He's preaching a message that he doesn't deserve to preach. He's preaching about a forgiveness that he doesn't deserve to have. And because he is coming to God whole and main, he's not coming to God whole. He's having to repent of an entire former life. He's having to literally look at God and say, God, I can't be useful for anything. The only thing I can do, I can't look at people and say, look at the good deeds that I've done. I can't look at people and say, God, look at how perfect I've been. Apostle Paul's story was this, if you can remember. And then Apostle Paul's writings to Timothy, that there is a new chief of sinners, and it's me. It's Apostle Paul. We've got no room as a Christian. We've got no room to brag on our worth. We've got no room to brag amen, on our good deeds. The only thing we can do, amen, if we're looking at how worthless we are, we can look at the awesomeness of Christ. Amen. How he came to us when we were so.
Hey, Amen. That there's been some death in the family. Hey, Amen. That Timothy has set by and he's watched loved ones pass on. How can I say this to you today? How about Apostle Paul? is willing to pour into Timothy uh, for at least two books. And then we've got Timothy seven Romans and we've got him on the tail end in the book of Acts. Uh, can I say this? How uh, the Apostle Paul is willing to pour in uh, to Timothy? How uh, much he willing to pour into him for? He's not a perfect person. He's suffered loss. He's suffered tragedy. He's not in a good mental state. How uh, can I say this to you tonight? perfect to love you. God's not waiting on you to get perfect so he can use you. Listen, my friend, if there's something you need to be thankful for, be thankful that God's not waiting on you to get perfect for him to save you. He's not waiting on you to get perfect to take you to heaven. He's just waiting on you to get honest and come to him. He is of those who are a broken heart and a contrite spirit. What does that mean for you and I? Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, let's put this a little deeper. Timothy's got a problem. Hey, I realize we're preaching on a Sunday night. A lot of folks don't want to hear preach, but we're preaching. It's okay. Listen, Apostle Timothy's getting ready to have an issue. Apostle Paul was going to give Timothy in the first book of Timothy the legalization of the church, his qualifications, the deacons, the, the governing of the church body. And it's almost like in the book of 2 Timothy that Apostle Paul is going to look at Timothy and say, I've taught you now how to get the church ready, but I'm teaching you now how to get you ready. And one of the things that Apostle Paul is going to point out about Timothy is the fact that he's a young man. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3, I believe it is, Apostle Paul is going to look at Timothy and say this, and let no one despise thy youth. Let no one despise thy youth. How can I say this to you? If there's something I can amen, Timothy, right there. Amen, started preaching when I was 12. Amen, there was churches that were looking at me, pastor, when I was 18. Amen, I can remember very well. Amen, I was young and dumb then. Amen, I ain't no dumb dumb now, but I'm a little bit smarter, still on the dumb side. Listen to me though. I can remember. Amen. When the first church had asked me to pastor him, I was 17 and a half, 18 years old. Amen. And what I didn't realize, how when they wanted me to pastor, it wasn't because they was God sending me over there. They wanted them a young man that they could lead and they could tell what to do and tell how to do it. Amen. Be, help me their little puppet. Amen. And boy, those how those wolves would just cuddle up. common sense hit me. Amen. And God got me out of that mess. Amen. And that's a moment that I come to God and I say, God, at this moment, I didn't use my best judgment. At this moment, God, I like getting my, have my ear tickled. And God, I enjoyed that for that moment. But you don't know what I did for that moment. I cut it off. I cut it off right there. I'm going to chase what you're saying. I'm using that to look at anybody and say this. And my friend, the popularity of people does not equal the approval of God. Amen. Now listen to me, my beloved friend. How can I say this to you? Amen. It wasn't long after that I started pastoring. Amen. A church. God bless her little heart. I'm thankful for the wisdom of the church. Amen. I was 18, 19 years old. And they ordained me. And bless my little heart. Amen. I thought they needed a ruler. And they've been some places with me. And they've been in revival. Chase Lay the Fireball. Chase Lay. Amen. Energizer Bunny for the preachers. Amen. They didn't want no 18 and a half year old boy to come in and be the ruler. I messed up. But God winked at that because there was a little bit of a heart that was right. Chase, what are you saying? I'm telling you, with all of my heart, church, there were moments that I messed up when I pastored that church. But God, He cut it off of me. Amen. Can I preach to anybody that's listening to me tonight? Amen. If there's mistakes you've made in your Christian life, and things that you could have done better, and you're keeping those things from God, you're keeping blessings away. You're keeping things from God uh, that He can turn into blessings. I'm sure you didn't handle things right. Sure you messed up. Sure there were words that were spoken that shouldn't have been. You might have handled some things wrong. Uh, but can I say this to you, church? Uh, the longer you keep those things God, the longer you're keeping the clay from being molded, the longer you're keeping God from blessing that life. It's not a mistake you can't use. It's a mistake God can use. Hang on a minute. Hey Amen, Chase. God bless you, Chase. That's good. Boy. Thank you for that. Oh, listen. Start passing the place. Never forget this. Brought some folks in to vote against me. Amen. About every time the election came around, folks got brought in. And you know, I can't tell you how many times I've been called kid. You, you, you just a pup. You just a little punk. Had people on the pulpit committee call me a punk kid. Amen. You know what I said to that? Well, glory. And you know what that little pup did? Amen. Got business meeting changed to where when those blessed folks came in to vote against me, the old moderator could just stand up and 
and say, we're not having business and that will have it next week. Amen. That way the wolves had to at least come a few weeks in a row before they vote against me. Amen. What are you saying? This is what I'm saying. The Apostle Paul, God should look at Timothy and he could say, you've already suffered and you've already had woe and you've already had tragedy. There's no way you're in a good mindset. There's people that will say there's no way you're in a good mindset to serve God. There's no way you're in a good mindset to live for God. And then on top of that, Timothy, guess what else you are? You're a kid. You're a young man. And some people are going to come at you and they're going to say, you got no business preaching that. You're a youngin. How can I say this to you? How my beloved friend, listen to me. How there's folks that might be in this room. Hey, man, if folks don't take your Christianity seriously, how there's folks that may be in this room. I may be watching on YouTube. How that folks don't take your prayer life seriously. How there might be folks. And remember, I'm not talking to Timothy as a man 16, 17 year old. I believe he's in his 30s, maybe late 20s. That's where I'm going to put it. I may be a little older. How can I say this to you? How can you be surprised?
You look at how many people in Scripture that God blessed outside of their mistakes. And you all know what God did before He blessed Jacob? He asked Jacob, go back and look in your Scriptures if you will. God looked at Jacob and He said, what's your name? Well, don't you believe that God is all-knowing? Ask Jacob what his name was. He said, my name is Jacob. You want to know what he wanted to say? My name's Deceiver. I'm a deceiver. I've wronged my family. I've wronged, I've wronged those that I love. And the moment that God, and we're going to preach this last point, we'll be done. The moment that Jacob became honest with God, God blessed him more than he ever would have realized. Walked around with a limp the rest of his days. I've got a good preacher friend of mine. He used to be my pastor. You still with me? Yeah. Got a good friend of mine. He used to be my pastor. And he's got sleeves and tattoos all the way down those arms. Sleeves. And it represents a time that he was away from God. I was brought up at times, if you're a preacher or a child of God, and you've got a bad past and it shows on your body, that you need to cover that up because that shows sin. Pastor at the time, he would always come to church with polos or short sleeve button ups and he'd show those tattoos. Well, why? He always testified and preached that he was showing what God pulled him from and what God saved him from. He didn't want to hide what God had done for him. I say this to you. Jacob could not hide what God had done for him. If he would have hid what God had done for him, it would have been more noticeable. Jacob had a dislocated hip. He had a hip out of joint. If he's going to hide that, it would have been more noticeable. Yeah. Apostle Paul, every church he went to, he couldn't hide his past. Everybody knew it. So the best thing he could do is added to his testimony of what God had pulled him from. I told this Sunday night, and this church knows this, if you get close enough to me, I've got scars on me. And uh, those scars are because I, I used to be a cutter. I got real depressed uh, when I was a teenager, very depressed. One day in my life. And some of the cuts are left pretty deep scars. I can't hide those things. And I, I didn't know that God was going to use that for His glory. I just thought I'd have to walk around and bear those marks. Until I was teaching a Sunday school class. And I had my hand on, on my Bible. And there was a kid in the class pointed at one of my scars. And he said, what's that? And you know what I got to do? I got to tell him about how God saved this one from depression. I'm not whole. And I'm not perfect. i got a past. But all I have, I'm giving it to him. Yeah. I've met folks. This might be the better part of the message. I have met folks that if you walk up and look at them, you'll see someone that intimidates you. Because their past, they wear it. They look like a druggie because they were a druggie. They look like sin because that was their life. But now their life is in Christ Jesus. So guess what? They're maimed. They're hauled. They've had to cut some things off. Why? So they can live whole. All they have, they're giving it to Christ. Yeah. I have... I've got friends of mine, Brother Randy Burge, wonderful, wonderful friend of mine, goes around city to city, state to state, telling his testimony of how God saved him from drugs. And you all know what he's admitting? I'm not whole. I've had to cut some things off. I'm missing, I'm missing some limbs. Years of my life are gone. But all I have, I'm giving it to him. There's addictions that I've had and I'm not comfortable 
I'm not preaching those things. I never have. But there are things that I've had to look at people one-on-one -on -one and admit that I've been addicted to. You all know why? Because when they saw me, they see preacher checks. They see pastor checks. But when they can see some parts that I've had to cut off, they see the main part of Chase. They see the halted part of Chase. They can see that whatever's left of them after sin's got done with them, God wants to help them. Amen. I believe like there's a lot of folks. I appreciate us tonight, by the way. Some of the amen corners missing. Hud is helping me. I believe that there are Christian saved people that would love to come to God, but they don't feel like they can because tragedies have cut a lot of their heart out, cut a lot of their joy out, cut a lot of their self out. If you'll have it, cut a lot of their soul out. And I don't mean that spiritually. You stay with me. I believe that there's spouses that can look at spouses and say, I'm not perfect. But what I am, I'm going to give it to you. I believe there's kids that can look at parents and say, I've messed up. I'm not the perfect kid now. But what I am, I'm going to give it to you. And I believe there's a mess load of folk that could come to God and say, God, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And God, I've messed up here. I've done these things. But instead of letting all these things and what I'm not get between me and you, I'm going to give you what I have. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. I would love, I'd love to encourage you this evening. I'd love to. Is anybody here tonight? Jessica, I'll get you to finish this off if you don't care. Um, your goodness is running after me. Come say, I'll give you one you know. Um, I'd love for you tonight. I, 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 I'm beating around the bush. I, I'll just go ahead and say it. How many Christians in the house? Because I don't know, you two folks, usually by the end of the week, Scott, we, we probably got about 60, 70 folks that watch our videos, usually Sunday to Sunday. Um, how many folk in the house battle with insecurities? God bless you. And sometimes those insecurities, they obviously affect your home, they affect your life but they affect your walk with God. You don't have the testimony that everybody else does. You'd be surprised, and I've preached this, but God honestly, one of these days, I'd love to teach it, just teach it. You'd be surprised because somebody didn't get saved how somebody else did. How that absolutely cripples their walk with God. Cripples it. Because it's different different. What looks like a maiming to somebody else, what looks like a hurt, what looks like a hindrance, if you give it to God, God can use your difference. Because here's the truth. If people, if people that have a different testimony, if they never share it, then you all know what that means? Everybody has to be saved the exact same way. Because people that weren't never come out and tell them. Is anybody there? What about your insecurities because you don't have the Christian life that you wish you did or because you think that things should be different and you don't have the Christian life that everyone else does? And you're looking, we're looking in Matthew 18 at arms and legs. We're looking at Matthew 18 at eyes and limbs. It doesn't matter what your insecurity is. It doesn't matter what is keeping between you and God. Can I just encourage you? Get all of you, all your problems, all your past, all your regrets, all your things that you wish were better, all the things that are out of your control. And I, I'm talking to all of us. Jessica's about ready. 
All these things that are on your heart. If you can still hear me, can you say amen? Amen. All these things that are on you. Would you bring them to God? Would you bring them to God? That's the message. Let's stay on the same Jessica and every Christian. He had his shirt raised up. 
And he was looking at his abs. And he'd turn to the right and look at his abs. And then he'd turn to the left and look at his abs. And he'd do different poses. And I'm trying to get a workout in. This cat won't quit looking at his abs. And I thought, dear God, I know you got an alley belly button, but it ain't that nice. Let's move on. And just to put him in his place, just like that, I had a little bit of attitude. I got up. This went on for about 10 minutes. I got up, walked right next to him. I never met this fella. And I raised my shirt completely up. And I looked in the mirror at my nice gigantic belly. And I turned to the left and looked at my belly. And I turned to the right and looked at my belly. And I just kept staring at myself, just like he was doing. I just... And he looked at me and he said, I think I get your point. <laughs> and I said, good. That way me and you both put our bellies up. Good. <laughs> There's things that you and I don't like about ourselves. There's moments of our lives that we don't like and don't care for. But here's the truth. The moments that you didn't like, God was still faithful to you through those moments. Yes, thank you. The things that you don't like about you, God loves you for that. Not that he loves those parts or he approves of it. But God doesn't look at what you don't like and it doesn't make him less faithful. Amen. Is that the truth? Amen. I encourage you with all my heart tonight. Everything that you don't like about you, everything you don't like about your life, every moment, every part of it, cut it off. Give it to God. And he'll make it part of the things that he's blessed you through. He's blessed you with. Is that right? Yeah. Anybody got anything tonight? So you enjoyed the message. Yeah. I've enjoyed the services today. Before being here. Yeah. There was a uh, we went to revival last week in Kentucky. And uh, Pastor Bob watched a good bit of it. And that is a woman just about shouted every service, bless her heart. And, uh, she's an elder lady. And I just thought that, you know, saying that God lived it in 60, 70 years, whatever the case is. And that pastor gave opportunity for somebody to testify. And that lady testified. And she'd been married six times. And that was before she got saved. She got saved late in life. And she testified that she wasn't good to those men. And some of it was her fault, some of it wasn't. But she's dedicated that God had brought her through all that. And because he had, she's going to live the rest of her life for him. Amen. Amen. You know what that's called? That's called not being whole, but giving what you have. Yeah. And giving it to him. I encourage you with, with all of my heart, you, you look at how imperfect you are. And if you're not careful, you'll focus so much on how imperfect you are that you won't even be glad you've got a perfect Savior. But a perfect Savior loves imperfect people. Love you so much. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Sunday morning. I meant to go through this a minute ago. As soon as the baby starts praying, y'all come in. Um, we've got worship starting Sunday morning at 10. Pitch in dinner after church. No nuts, peanuts, or seafood. God bless you. We'll see you on YouTube.